Hello, welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Ryan Bruss. I'm here with Emma Stark. She's Irish, but she lives in Scotland, so this is going to be a wild one. Emma, thank you for being with us. <laughs> and and uh, today we're going to talk about angels, so fasten your seatbelts. And Emma teaches that it's biblically normal to have angelic encounters today, and there's a new paradigm, there's a new pattern of people, Christians, believers, partnering with angels. You've got a ton of stories. Now, b you talk about it being biblically normal. Let's go to Isaiah 6. Yes. Because uh, I, uh, Isaiah had a wonderful experience, but you you have an experience tied in with that. Well, yes. And uh, yeah, this is an Irish accent, <laughs> and I'm full-blown Celtic warrior, just so you've got the heads up on that. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a teenager and when I was studying at university, um, I had my first angel encounter, which set me on a trajectory to examine the scriptures to see, well, God, is this okay? Because I just want to be biblically normal. All I don't right. want to be outside of biblical right. best practice. So I was on my knees praying Isaiah 6, and I was praying that for days. And I would run back from my lectures and say, God, here I am, send me, you know, th th that devotion yes. of a teenager, yep. you know, oh, I just want you to use me, God. And then this seraphim walked physically through the wall. Now tell the people at home what a seraphim is in case they don't know. Well, a seraphim is one of the holiest angels and it's in that, it's, in fact, it's the only time seraphim is mentioned in scripture is Isaiah 6. Okay. And they're the ones that hold the, to the tongs the, with coals with the in coal, the end. Right. And he was terrifying because of course they're many winged and in fact they're six winged and very much like Mary who falls down dead or John in scripture, the revelator, I was like, if I hadn't been on the floor already, I would have been on the floor. Right. So I'm holding the end of my bed sheets in that kind of, because the holiness of God mm. has just walked into the room. And this angel said, the Lord has heard your prayers. And he physically put the coal to my lips. And in a second, as an 18 year old, my entire mouth went totally ulcerated wow. and I started to bleed. I actually have blood on the pages of that Bible that I was using in Whoa. my late teenage years. And it was just, it was so shocking. And I, obviously I was in pain, but I had met physically, not just spiritually, I had met physically with the power and the purification of the Lord. So I, I mean, I was terrified and I went straight to my minister. I'm like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, and um, this would have been in the mid nineties. And he just got some water and blessed it and said, drink it. And as quickly as the burning had come, it went. And so that made me start to say, well, oh, oh, oh God, you know, is this going to be the way life should be? Is, right. is this normal? Right. So let me give you some biblical numbers. Angels are in scripture 300 times. So they're quite common. Right. But 104 of those times, they are interacting, talking to people. So tongues, if I get you to guess how many times tongues is in scripture, speaking in tongues. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. Yeah. No, 12 to 15. Yeah. Or a Gideon's fleece. I mean, how yeah. many times is that? Yeah. Once. Yeah. And yet we've all laid fleeces before right, the Lord. Right. You know, I don't know what your fleece laying is like. Mine can be a bit daft. Oh God, my hanging baskets are all dead. If you resurrect the flowers, <laughs> they're all in bloom. You know, I know you have got this task. Right. We're all a bit right, daft right, with right. it. What's daft? Daft, silly. Silly, okay. Silly, some, I'm a bit silly with my fleeces. <laughs> but the point of it is, tongues is only there half, you know, a dozen times. Mm. A fleece there once angel interaction 104 times. Yeah. It is more biblically normal to interact with an angel than it is to lay out a fleece or speak in tongues. Now, what is the purpose, the main purpose in God wanting us to interact with angels? Well, I think Hebrews 1 summates that very well, that angels are ministering spirits right. sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. Yeah. Now, the tense in that is interesting. It's not a um, future tense like, oh, one day there's going to be an angel right. or a past tense like, 
oh, there was one back there. Yeah. It's an ongoing tense. In other words, you're being ministered to by angels. I'm being ministered to by angels. We're just a little bit supernaturally dull. So I, I agree with you 100%, yeah. uh, hopefully not the spiritually dull part, even though we are. <laughs> but yes. I agree with you that we're yeah. being ministered by angels. How can we begin to discern that I am being ministered to by angels around me because the Bible says we are. Yes, I think we come to the whole conversation of the validity of the supernatural experience here. Right. And let's jump into the New Testament because we want to be biblically literate on these things. Right. So let's look at scriptures that say, fix your eyes on the unseen realm. Right. Because the seen, all this stuff here yeah. is temporary, but the unseen is eternal. And I think we have this kind of bizarre notion that, well, it's only for the special. I mean, it's only for those who right. know a mystical right. secret. We right. get a little bit weird about it. Yeah. But actually, Scripture says, fix your eyes. It's a command. You have got to look into the supernatural right. realm. And that's layered with other concepts um, like uh, Ephesians, where it says, Lord, open the eyes of my heart that I might see you. So I want to, to debunk this thought, well, it can only be for the special. Yeah. And I want to say, look, we're actually commanded to, to gaze into the supernatural realm. I think Jesus is the interesting model, isn't he? Because he says this thing, I only did what I saw, saw yes. the Father do. Yep. In other words, I am looking into the spiritual realm. So is it a matter of developing our spiritual eyes to see yes. and to discern? Yes. I think you can ask intelligent questions. Okay. You know, where is Jesus in the room? Where are right. the angels in the room? And I think when you look at Daniel 7 and you, you get an, a pen and you underline the number of times it says, I looked, I asked, yeah. I looked again, I focused again, that there's very much a sense that it's not just, oh, you know, I've had this vision. Right. And right. oh my goodness, I'm pinned back by the power right. of God. But that glorious sense of a man teaching us how he's peering and asking and seeking and looking. Vitally important part of the journey. So when we come back, I'm going to ask Emma to define how we can sharpen our discernment. To, to, Like she said, we don't want to be dull. We want to be sharp in the spirit. So we'll talk about that in the next segment and guarding angels and angels of his presence. Yeah. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More. I'm here with Emma Stark, and we're talking about angels and angel encounters. And, and she teaches that it's supposed to be biblically normal for you and I to encounter angels. And when we left the last segment, we were talking about uh, if you can give us a few nuggets on how to sharpen our discernment. So like you said, yes. we don't stay dull. Yes. I think we have to be honest with ourselves. We are selectively supernatural. Oh I mean, we really are a bit naughty. Yeah. So we, we love the concepts of the virgin birth, yeah. which is a far right idea. It is. But we are quite happy to take a pair of scissors and cut out some other things and say, well, that was only for a certain time. Right. Right. So we have to, to, to be, to, to be man, up, man up enough to go, I'm a little bit selective supernaturally. Right. I could really do better. I think for me, one of the key things is we have to jump into Corinthians and we have to ask God for the gift, the supernatural gift of the discerning of spirits. And we think, oh, well, the discerning of spirits helps me avoid difficult people. Right. Uh, we're, t we're too narrow on right. it. Right. And yet the gift of the discerning of spirits actually helps me discern what is human, what is holy, and what is demonic. That's so good. if I want to know what angels are there or what hindrances are there or what is my own flesh, I need to be robust in the gift of the discerning of spirits. And I think when you ask for that, and you say, Jesus, I want that mature. I want to not be deceived. I want to be established in maturity. You ask for the gift of the discerning of spirits. Now, what else can we do to yes. hone in those skills, so to speak, on the, on the supernatural? Yeah. <sighs> 
We have to change yes. our thinking. We like do. You said, we we do. We have to come into a place. If you don't expect it, yeah. it won't happen. But but you, when I interviewed you on for our podcast, yes. I think you talked a lot about praying in tongues. Really, yes, is a big I think there's something. So you ask for the gift of the discerning yeah. of spirits. You get over your nonsense about right. being right. selectively supernatural. Right. You get over yourself. Yeah. Um, you uh, then pray in tongues a lot because you're just tuning into the spirit realm. But then you ask intelligent questions. Jesus, could you show me yeah. where you are in the room? Yeah. Jesus, could you show me the angels in the room? Now, when I was teaching my children this, I would say to them, because they'd go, oh, mommy, mommy, oh, you know, that kind of, okay, no, I didn't get anything. You know, and I would say to them, if you would have got something, what would it have been? Right. And that I put the expectation that you are going to see. Now, what my team would do is that they would pray every day the Ephesians prayer. Ephesians 1, mm -hmm. 17, 18, open the eyes of my heart. Right. I think it's that sense of you've got to mean business. This has got to be a lifestyle. Right. So some of my core team who've been with me for years are praying every day, open the eyes of my heart. Why? Because they're serious about it. Yeah. They're not looking for, uh, well, I'm going to be dazzled by the supernatural. They are Comfortable. They're comfortable and they're hungry. They're comfortable with a day-to-day -day right. prayer. Um, so the, the aim here is that you don't want to be dazzled by the spectacular. You want to be comfortable with the supernatural. Love it. Love it. Okay, so uh, let's talk more about angels. You yes. you talk about the angels of his presence. Oh, what is that? <laughs> they're amazing. They're amazing. I get so excited about this. So scripture, if you read it with a, a detailed eye, you'll start to see angel categories come through in the biblical text. Let's go to Isaiah 63. Right. So Isaiah 63 has this great verse, and the angels of his presence. Mm. Oh, when they come into the room yeah. and they're carrying the presence of mm, God. I love that. Oh, yeah. it's mind blowing. But I mean, I remember uh, going to a church once and an angel of his presence, he would have been about 60 meters wide. I mean, a vast, Whoa. vast and, and full uh, wings out. Yeah. And he was circling over the top of this church and he was trying to release the presence of God in the church. Mm. And for weeks I would go and he would be there and he was screeching in unbearable pain because the church did not want Yikes. the presence of God. Yikes. And eventually that angel just uh, had had enough and left. Mm. But I think we need to be aware of the angels of his presence. Wow. Do you want to hear some Please. other categories Give, of yeah, angels? Yeah. So uh, guardian angels. Paul talks about angels being given to every child at birth. Right. And of course, that uh, uh, means that we all have one. We all have an angel who looks after us. And of course, then later in scripture, Paul talks about the angel to whom I belong, suggesting that they don't leave us in, in adult hood. And so my guardian angels, they nurture and protect me. But let me tell you about my daughter, because she's 17. And I sat her down actually just a few days ago and I said, Jessica, tell me about your angels, uh, your guardian angel. She says, mommy, when I walk into a room, he walks in ahead of me and he does two complete laps of the room just to check that there's nothing harmful wow. in the room. She says he changes color. She says his eyes change color mm. depending on his mood. She says, when I'm witnessing and telling my friends about Jesus and in some quite hostile environments in her high school, she says, that angel, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he hums wow. and he looses the glory of God. Wow. She says, he can hum two notes at once. Wow. Mommy, she says, he harmonizes with himself. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah. and then she says, mommy, do you know, Sometimes my guardian angel is the only person who laughs at my jokes. Ah. <laughs> and she's so comfortable, she's so comfortable right. with the fact. So she's not right. worshiping angels, which right. is by the way, a sin. That's not good. So can we yeah. just please get over yeah. ourselves and yeah. not do that? Yeah. But equally, there is that sense in scripture where um, Moses is being briefed by God and God says, I'm going to send an angel and God is quite strict you are going to pay attention and you are going to do what he says. So scripture has that expectation all the way through that we will partner with the angels and we will do what they say. 
And I, yeah, sorry. And is it, is it okay to uh, ask for encounters with angels? I, I think so. I think there's a sense that we need to pray, God, would you sharpen my supernatural senses? Yeah. God, would you make me biblically normal? God, I don't want to worship angels, but I want to be biblically accurate by fixing up my gaze on the unseen realm. That, that's awesome. And, yeah. you know, it, it should be very comforting and reassuring, especially what she was talking about her daughter. That's her guardian, guardian yes. angel, yes. Which, which we all have. Mm -hmm. And so they're there to minister uh, for you, to you, with you. And so get that assurance in you that you're not alone. You have Jesus, you have the Father, you have the Holy Spirit, but you have the workers of God, these angels working side by side with you to help you fulfill what God's called you to do. Now, when we come back, Emma's not only going to pray for you, but she's going to talk about the three dominant angels, right, that are on the earth yes. right now. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Call now and get Emma Stark's powerful brand new book, The Prophetic Warrior and her audio masterclass package, Hearing and Seeing God, plus her special audio teaching, Teaching Children to Receive Divine Guidance. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9686. Are you ready for a new level of boldness and authority? Emma Stark's powerful brand new book, The Prophetic Warrior, was written to help you operate in your true prophetic authority. Through this powerful book, you will learn how to operate with the gift of discerning of spirits. Discover the different ways that God wants to communicate with you. Receive new thoughts, plans, ideas, creativity, and fresh anointing. Gain the mindset of being a champion and watch how victory will be yours every day. Flow with revelation, miracles, signs, and wonders like never before. Begin to prophesy and release a successful and prosperous reality to individuals, cities, and nations. This book includes powerful decrees that you can declare out loud to shift the very atmosphere around you and to access supernatural breakthroughs and transformation. You will also receive Emma's audio masterclass package, Hearing and Seeing God, which includes 10 different sessions. Learn how to access the throne room. Use your super natural gifts, tap into the power of the prophetic, work with angels, and much more. Emma includes anointed prayers to open you up to divine revelation, for angel encounters to become a normal part of your life, for your senses to come into alignment with Scripture, for you to begin to sense the presence of the Holy Spirit, for the glory of God to invade the atmosphere around you. Plus, you will receive Emma's special audio teaching, teaching children to receive divine guidance. Emma wants to impart to you how you can teach your own children or grandchildren how to hear God's voice and His direction in their everyday life. She shares how your children can overcome rejection and failure, overcome their woundedness, minister to other children. Don't miss out on getting Emma Stark's powerful brand new book, The Prophetic Warrior, and her audio masterclass package, Hearing and Seeing God, which includes 10 different sessions, plus her special audio teaching, teaching children to receive divine guidance. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9686. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9686 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. We're here learning about angels with Emma Stark, and we're having a blast. Thank you. <laughs> now, you talked about your daughter uh, having a guardian angel. Yes. We all do. Yes. What about yours? <gasps> oh, I, mine is fantastic. <laughs> uh, although, to be fair, I've had a few um, over, but let me tell you a story about one. Yeah. So, my husband and I and a friend had gone for dinner one night in a restaurant. We'd ordered our meal, and we were waiting for it to come to the table. And this ugly, demonic, strong man, uh, demon, appeared in the restaurant. And I'd seen him before, but this time he was in full-blown warfare mode. Wow. He opened his jacket and all his minion demons rolled out wow. and the restaurant was full of this force of the demonic. So my husband sees my face and he goes, Emma, are you okay? <laughs> he says, do we need to leave? And I'm like, no, 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 I've ordered my food. Yeah, we're, we are, eat, I'm we're not leaving yeah. now. You know, and how difficult it is to get babysitters sometimes <laughs> exactly. and the like. And I'm like, no, I'm I am. Eat this meal. I am <laughs> staying. So um, I turned to my guardian angel to say, what are we 
what's the best plan here? But he's a Psalm 91 angel, which is the angels who hide you under their wings, Mm. fast as anything. I don't even have to speak to him. I just turn around, he winks at me, he's so on it. (sighs) His wings are up and he covers the three of us at the table and we become completely physically invisible. I cannot get any waitress's attention. We're waving, I'm shouting, I'm calling. It's like we have ceased to exist. So in the end, out of utter desperation, I go to the kitchen hatch and say, I've ordered food and I have to serve my own food to the three of us. End of the night, restaurant is closing. We're the only customers there. The waitresses are mopping the floor. The chairs are upside down on the tables and it's uh, kind of lock-up time. And the demons disappear, yeah. and the way angel, the hydra angel goes, oh, puts his wings uh, down. Yeah. At that moment, we are suddenly visible. There's a swarm of all the staff. How did you get in here? How long have you been here? Wow. Why could we not? Why could we not see you? What's going on? We looked around the restaurant. We made sure it was clear. We locked the front door. You're in our prime seat, and we did not see anybody at that table all night. That's well, incredible. It is. How do you explain that? It's supernatural. So we just gave them a large tip. Did you eat though? Did you guys get to eat at least? We did. We okay. ate. We ate, <laughs> and we did. We didn't even get a dessert menu because that was too much like hard work. Right. So, you know, and we just gave them a large tip and blessed them and left. Mm. Uh, but that's kind of, I have to say, that's kind of my norm. It, I was going to say, you have this kind of activity happening all the time. Yeah. I, I think because we have so trained ourselves to see yeah. that actually we're very comfortable in that place of, of an every day. You know, and of course I see my I have three children. I see my three children's guardian angels on a daily basis, just touching base, looking in with them, checking that wow. they're okay. And um, I don't talk to them all the time, right. but I am very aware as are my, my staff team who I train, as are my children, of the protection of angels. You can see them working with your family. To all, all of the time. Now, uh, Emma, you talk about the day of the three dominant angels in the oh. earth realm. This sounds pretty exciting. It sounds kind of Celtic. Is, it is. <laughs> well, I think we have known for a while that we're in this day of the billion, billion soul harvest. Yes. But I saw two angels spinning around the globe, and one of them was the angel of awakening, and one of them was the angel of harvest. So God has sent harvest and awakening angels to circumnavigate the globe. But then I saw another descend, and these three heavyweight angels started to fly and just cover the globe. And the third one was the angel of destruction which sounds a little bit intense. I would call them the destroyer angel. Now, of course, they are in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. We read in scripture that destroyer angels destroy the cities. We read about them in Corinthians, where they destroy those who grumble. Um, So this term destroyer angel, I have lifted straight out of the biblical text. And the Lord says, I am sending angels who destroy that which stands against the knowledge of God to the earth. And he walked into my office. Oh my goodness, he's menacing. And uh, he sat down on my settee and I said, what are you here to do? He said, I'm here to work with the saints of God to destroy the accuser of the brethren. Wow. And I, I've only seen one or two of them until recently, and suddenly there were squadrons. And do you remember Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10 says that we're to build up, but also to, yeah, to, to, tear, to tear down. down yeah. I think we're very good at being positive. Oh, yeah. you know, you're going to have a blessed day, or yeah. things are going to go well with you. But this tearing down, the Lord says, if you pray it, these destroyer angels will tear down that which stands against my kingdom. Especially things that are uh, supposed to be happening in our lives or, yes. or globally, nationally? Both, both uh, personally and globally, there is this release. And they are deliverance angels. And they wow. are going to bring to the body of Christ not just destruction, but deliverance. And there's going to be a new mindset of mm. what it means to be those who bring deliverance, who partner with deliverance, and have the mindset of deliverers with how we pray. I love it. We have about a minute left. Please pray for the people. I feel oh. the anointing right now. 
Just go for it. So guys, as you watch me, raise your hands because I just want you to catch this as I release it to you. In the name of Jesus, every blockage to your spiritual sight is broken right now. I take the scales off your eyes where you have been supernaturally dull in the name of Jesus. And I loose the blessing of Ephesians 1 that the eyes of your heart are now fully opened that you may see in the spirit realm. And for those of you that have seen terrifying things, we halt that in Jesus' name. And I loose to you the ability to only see the things of your king right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, you heard it here. There are angels working for you, not against you. There, there's angels that are destroying everything that is standing between you and what God's called you to do. It's time for you to partner, as Emma said, partner with your angels, work with your angels, get rid of the spiritual dullness, get on fire for God. Hey, thank you for joining us on Something More. We'll see you next time.